No relief for coral reefs around the world as global carbon emissions continue to push up ocean temperatures, essentially cooking these fragile ecosystems. Now, this year, Australia's Great Barrier Reef experienced another mass bleaching event, the fourth since 2016. But research, which some experts consider controversial, could provide solutions for the future. CNA's climate change correspondent Jack Board has the story. It was a wild summer on the Great Barrier Reef. A La Nina cycle brought big swells, strong winds and cool temperatures. It should have meant relief for the reef's delicate corals, but they continue to struggle. A generally warming ocean environment is to blame. Corals become stressed and lose their colour. This year, 91% of the reefs surveyed here have bleached. It's an alarming situation given the La Nina conditions. Oh, the Barrier Reef's not doing well at all. Um, like every other coral reef around the world, it's impacted by various human activities, the most pressing one almost everywhere now being global warming. We didn't expect to see bleaching this year because of the La Nina forecasts. So the climate modelers are saying we no longer need El Nino events to trigger bleaching now and into the future. It can happen every year due to global warming. And we're very close to that now. The main concern is the shortening gap between one bleaching event and the next. Windows of opportunity for the coral populations to recover are narrowing fast. Coral reefs, like um, any other ecosystem, have uh, an innate, uh, evolved capacity to recover from the kinds of shocks that they have uh, grown used to over thousands or millions of, of years. But they have not evolved to cope with mass mortality every two or three years, which is what we're seeing now. Science tells us that the Great Barrier Reef has never been under so much strain. For an ecosystem as ancient as this one, it's a demonstration of the damage that human-induced climate change is causing. There's a choice to be made here. The reef may never return to its past splendor, but experts do believe that it can be saved. That can only happen if global warming is mitigated and investment made to ensure that the corals can endure a hotter planet. Researchers at the nearby Australian Institute of Marine Science are trying to better understand how climate change is affecting coral. Here at the National Sea Simulator, projects focus on direct intervention on the reef, including genetics, engineering and coral restoration rolled out potentially on an ecosystem-wide scale. So the research that we're doing uh, is around a reef restoration intervention called coral seeding. So the coral seeding method is where we take uh, larval coral, so just after spawning, we settle those down onto what we call seeding devices. These are very small polyps, about a millimeter in size, and then those seeding devices provide a really nice protective house for those corals that then get seeded out onto the coral reef. Researchers are trying to identify which genetic traits let certain corals live through bleaching events. Those with even a tiny chance of survival could then be bred to thrive. The concept is in its early days, but the team has grand plans. Technology often produces step changes in this process, and so that's really what we're trying to do is push the envelope to develop systems that can give us that step change up from producing a few thousand corals or a hundred thousand of corals a year to, you know, on the order of millions. That's really what's going to be required if we're to um, have, have any uh, effect on the coral populations on the reef. These projects are controversial and highly ambitious, given that the Great Barrier Reef spans a space larger than Malaysia. And experts stress that technology alone can't solve the pressing issues of climate change. We know that in recent years there has been progress. Governments, industries, communities are moving to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. We have many of the technologies that we need. In many places those are being implemented well and emissions are being reduced. We just also know that globally not enough is being done fast enough yet. So we have to lift our ambition. But if we are determined and we are willing to do more, then absolutely I am optimistic for the future of the Great Barrier Reef. There is hope for this delicate, complex environment, along with ideas and innovations. What's lacking is the time needed to save it. Jack Board, CNA, Townsville, Australia.